so today is November 2nd it is the third day of our rifle elk season here in Washington so today I'm just out here tagging along with my brother because he has an elk tag for a rifle and I don't so basically I'm just gonna be camera guy for him we've been hiking for about two and a half hours right now it's like seven o'clock in the morning and we still have probably like an hour 30 minutes left to get to our spot so yesterday my brother and my dad they spotted a herd of elk on the back side of this mountain right there so we're trying to loop our way and get to this side over here and basically just glass and see if we can relocate those elk my brother's pretty sure that he saw a bull with that herd so we're gonna try to go back in there and see if they're still hanging out around there they are literally like way back in the middle of nowhere so i'm assuming they haven't faced any pressure so i'm sure they're just chilling there So we just sat down, been glassing around for like 10 minutes. Spotted the first animal of the day. It's just a white-tailed doe. She's way up on the ridge line, but just feels good to be spotting something. So hopefully we can spot an elk or two momentarily. Well, it's been basically a full day today. It's been a pretty uneventful day. Saw some deer earlier this morning. And then ever since then, it's been nothing. So just been chilling, taking naps, catching up on sleep. And the sun has just dipped over the mountain. And so it's perfect glassing conditions right now. Animals should be moving up. And I did actually just spot a deer again. I think it's just one of the deer I spotted earlier this morning but no elk so hopefully our luck changes here and an elk shows up hopefully a bull elk that way we can make something happen tonight but if we don't see anything else then it's pretty much just an empty hike back to the truck and discuss plans of what we can do tomorrow Well, to keep things short and simple for you guys, days two, three, four, and five of elk hunting were just a bust. We haven't seen any elk. We've seen like five white-tailed deer, including those that you guys saw earlier, and then two mule deer does. That's pretty much it. It's been a pretty dead hunting trip, but today is Saturday and this weekend, both rifle deer and rifle elk season actually overlap so right now it's kind of like a two-in-one we're not really picky on what we see as long as it has antlers So it's about nine o'clock right now in the morning. We haven't seen anything today. So we decided to just climb up to this little ridge top. And right now we have this little clear cut that we can glass and then just little pockets all around us that we can also glass. But it's been pretty dead. So we decided to start a fire and pretty much just gonna chill here for the day just to see if we can catch any deer or elk moving throughout the day.
Today is definitely not the warmest day of hunting I've experienced. It's pretty cold. So I'm hoping that these deer will start moving soon. This is a pretty pressured area, so I don't know. We're in for a surprise, I guess. Well, I'm assuming it's like almost 10 o'clock in the morning and we finally just spotted the first deer of this trip. They're super far away. I tried putting the spotting scope on them, but like there's a lot of heat waves and it's just far in general. So this, the phone scope footage wasn't even all that great. But when I was looking at them, one of the deer was actually mounting the other deer. They did that like five different times. So I'm assuming that's a buck and a doe. But the weird thing is the supposed doe is actually bigger in terms of body size than that other one that's mounting it. I don't know, I guess in a way we can kind of head that way too. If we just hike up here and we just take that road all the way, we'll be able to get a closer look at them. But the thing is like, we took forever just to get this fire to work. And we were kind of hoping that they would show up along this ridge instead, but maybe it's too pressured here and we have to go back a little bit further to find deer. Timothy and I, we just ate a quick breakfast and packed up all our stuff and we're gonna make a stock on those two deer. We have no idea if one of them is even a buck but it was too far but just by the deer's behavior one of them's got to be a buck and just looking at them they were acting very uh very jumpy the deer that was doing the mounting was gonna go over into the timber and then something scared him or her and then that deer came running back out and they just calmly fed again so maybe there's a big buck around there somewhere hopefully they're still hanging out around there when we get there Yesterday, my dad and I, we came and back countryed in here. And the plan was to stay all the way until Sunday, but I just got the news that my dad pulled the double. My dad has both a doe and a buck tag, so he literally filled both of them within the span of one hour. And this whole morning, I've been getting pelted by snow, and it's still going right now so i'm gonna hike up over to my dad and supposedly he said uh he drugged the two deer together so they're just by each other now so should make it a little bit easier on us but right now dude i am just straight up getting pelted by the snow so we're gonna go over there he said he shot a two by two and a doe so just happy that my dad tagged out because this was the final couple of days he had to hunt before season closed. All right, well, I just made it. There they are, lined up together. This is my dad's buck for the 2020 general season tag. Just a nice little forky. No eye guards yet. Good eater. That's where he hit him. 
right behind the shoulder. And this is another big doe, just as big. Yeah, pretty much the same size as the doe I shot, but doubled up. The doe was shot right up here, and then my dad went and shot the buck over this little ridge, and he just drugged that deer all the way down this road. And then we have them together, but the weather's pretty nasty, so I don't want to break my camera, so we're just going to go to my GoPro right there. I'm just going to do some time lapse. Today is a very windy one. Not the ideal day to forget your gloves at the tent, so. I'm blasting this first area right here where it's just a bunch of clear cuts and I haven't seen one single deer, but I'm not surprised because I think all these deer are just hunkered down away from the wind, so. Well, I was starting to freeze up at that sniper position. My face is so cold, it's all numb, I could barely talk. So, instead of starting a fire, I decided to just walk to warm up. And I was walking along this road, and I got to about right there. And there was a doe that was bedded in this patch of pine trees right here. And I think she was pretty much knocked out because when she jumped, when I bumped her, she was looking around like trying to figure out what that noise was. And so I got right there and she slowly just walked away. She just kept looking everywhere trying to figure out what made that noise. So she was probably knocked out. I mean, I got literally like 20 yards from her. But I mean, if a deer is bedded in that stuff, there's no way you're gonna like pick her out. So I got right here, I spooked her. It's just one doe. Surprising that it's just one big mature doe. I was hoping that there was gonna be at least a buck with her, but at least the theory that I'm going off of is proving to be right up where the top of that mountain is that's where the wind is ripping and so I came down all the way to the bottom and like you can see this is just a little valley the wind does not hit down here and she was just better right there just all snug she didn't even know what bumped her hopefully we can do that again with a buck Well, I'm not entirely sure if that was the same doe I saw earlier. I saw that second deer probably about like 200 yards from where I first bumped that other doe. I kind of have a feeling it's the same deer, but I don't know. I was just working down that road, and then the road takes a big U-turn right here. So right at that U-turn, I just cut down that ridge, and I just decided to come and sit here because here I can see that entire side that I came from and then I can also see a little bit of these ridges down over here and then I can see some of these flats down towards the end of this ridge and I was just gonna sit here because it looks like a pretty ideal spot where deer should be hanging out around at least because right behind you guys is just some timber that follows this little creek from what we have observed that's where these deer are bedding so that's a possibility of where 
the deer could be bedded. I mean, at the top end of this little valley that I'm talking about, that's where I bumped that first doe. And then right here, you guys can see, it's just kind of timber-ish down over here. So I'm just gonna sit here, let everything settle down and just start rattling and calling a little bit and we'll see if something shows up. Well, I was just sitting here. I just got done doing a rattling sequence and just decided to glass around and I actually just spotted two deer looks like two does either a doe and a fawn or just two does they're just out feeding in the wide open I don't know if it's just because I'm out of the wind or if the wind actually died down because where those two deer are I don't see any brush moving at all from the wind so maybe the wind just died down which is a good thing Maybe it gets the deer back up on their feet. And maybe I have a better chance of spotting them out in the open rather than the timber. I mean, I've been trying to pick apart everything I can from open hillsides to timbered areas and little patches in the timber and just under little pine trees where a deer might be bedded. I've been doing that this whole time and just spotted these two deer white, right in the wide open. So we'll see i'm hoping that something decides to just trot behind me over here that's like 250 yards if even so literally just randomly threw up my binoculars and i just had a deer in the middle of my my vision It looked pretty big so I threw the spotting scope on it and it's actually just a doe but that's a good sign I was scared that if I came on this side the wind was gonna be ripping but I guess the wind just died so it seems like the deer are back up we'll see if this one has a partner I still have a lot of glassing ground that I haven't been glassed either so we'll see if we can make it happen here these deer are blending in really, really good, so. So I've been staring at this doe for like the past 10 minutes and I've just been looking at other places too just to see if I could find deer but I almost decided to leave this doe because like I wanted to go somewhere else but the fact that she was alone just didn't sit right with me. So I just said whatever I'm just going to sit here because it's only like 12.40 in the afternoon so sure enough I just kept sitting here and she has a friend. Unfortunately, her friend does not have antlers, so we're just kind of back to square one. Not that we ever left square one, but after like 10, 12 minutes, her friend comes out of the timber because she kept looking in the timber too. So I was like, she probably has a friend with her. I was just hoping that it was going to be a friend with big antlers, but oh well. I'm just happy that we solved the mystery and found her friend. Always trust your gut instinct. Well, I saw the does from this little point right here and I walked over here and then I looked down towards this little ridge that was a little closer to me and I see this spike buck just literally like full sprinting like running for his life and so i thought that i spooked him because it's only like 360 yards but then he disappeared behind that ridge and i look behind him there's a slightly bigger deer like just kind of trotting as if like 
you know, he was victorious over a fight or something. Because that first spike was literally like booking it. Like he wasn't like jumping with his tail, like waving. Like he was full on booking it. And I'm like, what the heck? How the heck did I scare him that bad? But then the second deer, which I'm also assuming is a buck, I didn't get a good look at him, but he was just kind of trotting, like having that posture, like he's the dominant buck. But they both disappeared behind some trees and I haven't been able to pick them up ever since. I'm just gonna stick here for a little bit longer and see if I can get some footage of them. The first one was a spike for sure. I literally saw his two little antlers just running with him when he was like booking it across. So I'm at the dead end of this road and this is about the closest I can get to shooting the ridges on the other side of the creek. So I'm just going to sit here until pretty much light runs out and then I'll just hike up to the top of this mountain and then drop back down to camp. The distance to shoot across is anywhere from 200 to 300 yards. I mean it goes well beyond 300 yards but with this new rifle and how much practice I've gotten with it I haven't stretched it over 300 yards so on this particular trip right here we're just maxing it out at 300 yards i actually have a doe that's just bedded right behind this little pine tree from me and i was just kind of doing my normal thing of just trying to pick out pockets pick out pine trees and stuff like that to see if deer were bedded under there and sure enough there's a deer bedded kind of right in the wide open i mean when you look at it from the spotting scope footage it makes her look like she's sticking out like a sore thumb but man you put that spotting scope away and you just have to start from scratch meaning you have to glass every single little pocket that's like a needle in a haystack right there so i know i have a doe right there i'm sure later on when they, the deer get back up to feed i'm sure she'll show herself into this little opening i have right here so until then we're just gonna sit here and glass it's kind of windy right here it's kind of raining too so hopefully it doesn't get too nasty to the point where I can't sit here anymore Today marks the final day for deer hunting for me this year because it's the last day of our late general rifle season and so I'm back out here for one final push. It has literally come down to the wire so I'm really hoping that the rut here is in full swing because if it is then you know you just don't know what's going to come running across from you so right now I'm just going to spend a little bit of time in this little clear cut right here. Just see if there's any buck that's gonna chase a doe across this field and uh, maybe we could get a shot off but if not then i'm just gonna slowly take this road all the way until i go into the timber and then i'm just gonna start rattling and start grunting see if we could coax in a big buck or a little buck we'll see <coughs>
Well, yesterday we heard a bunch of wolves howling here. And we heard the wolves after I made up my mind that I was going to come hunt here. So after I made up my mind that I was going to come hunt here and they started howling, I was like, man, that sucks. But still gave it a shot anyway because you never know. But they probably just passed through a couple hours ago here. Looks like there's a big one and a small one right here. That officially wraps up my 2020 Washington deer season. <sighs> what a disappointing way to end the season. It's not necessarily that I didn't tag out, it's just a fact that I saw way more wolf sign today than I saw any fresh deer sign. I didn't see a single deer today. I didn't see a single animal today. But I guess that's hunting, so that's it for deer season. So off to the next one. Literally first minute in and uh, we spotted two cows. They're a little bit of ways out there, but it's always a good sign to see elk at first light, so.